Hello, this is Sarah. Welcome back to my channel and please make sure to subscribe below. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a giant anemone flower out of cardstock paper. You can find all the materials linked below the video and the template for Cricut, Silhouette, or other cutting machines. And to hand cut for those that don't have a cutting machine. We'll start with the center of the anemone by getting foil and balling it up. This center will be about the size of my hand. The top side will be more of a ball and the bottom side doesn't really matter and you'll need a coupler that fits your PVC pipe that will be your stem for the giant flower. Create a little area on the bottom of the foil to get your coupler on. Then use masking tape to get the coupler in place and also use foil to border the area of the coupler to hold things in place. Then I used thicker masking tape to help cover the whole foil ball. Next, take black tissue paper and tear them into strips and some smaller squares enough to cover the whole ball. Then use matte Mod Podge and add it over your ball and take a strip of black tissue paper and cover the ball. I add Mod Podge on the ball and on top of the tissue paper. Finish the whole black center and set it to the side for it to dry. It takes about an hour or two for it to fully dry and I want to say a good whole day will really let it fully set. Next is the center fringes. I like cutting this through my cutting machine, but if you don't have one and you are hand cutting, you'll just have to cut straight fringes on half a sheet of paper. If you are using the template for the Cricut or Silhouette, then make sure to cut two of these shapes to four sheets of paper and you'll have a total of eight of these fringe shapes. Then just the tips, I'll be coloring it in with black marker. I like this thicker sharpie so it strokes faster, but if you have a thinner marker, you could use that, but it will take longer or you could also just use black acrylic paint and just color the top. If you are hand cutting straight fringes, you could just stroke one straight line on one side. Then you will have to flip it over and make sure to color the tips again and do this to all the fringe pieces. I also have a tutorial for these in the regular size anemones that I'll be linking below the video. Next, you'll need 10 sheets of letter size paper and you could print the pattern from the template and cut this by hand, which I usually prefer for the petals when they are this big or you could have it cut on the cutting machine. I like to work in increments of five, and so I would just cut a stack of five and another stack of five. With the leftover scrap on the corner, I also cut a thin shape that looks like a leaf where it has a pointy tip on the top and on the bottom and slightly rounded sides. You'll need 10 of these shapes. Notice they are thin and this is for the back of the petals where we'll be adding our wire to hold up the petals so the shape does not have to be perfect. Next, I like to soak the petal with water but don't over soak it. You just want the right amount of water then I take a little bit of pigment of pink and add this to the bottom of the petal to give it this gradient look. You could also make these flowers with a solid color paper or also try different color paint. These flowers are also a popular flower in a solid white color with the black center and very trendy in weddings, so this painting part is optional. Next, go back to the fringes that we marked with a black marker and only if you use the template for the cutting machine, you'll need to shape the ends by just curling in the ends to give this some texture and shape. If you hand cut the straight fringes, you could just fluff it up later when you put this together. So you can move on to the next step if you are shaping the ends like me. I like to try to work in stacks so you could add two and shape together. Next, add glue on the straight end and glue it around the rim of the black tissue ball. Mine is still kind of drying and you can tell you could still see that white glue color on the tissue paper that usually disappears after it's fully dry, but by touch, it was pretty dry so I just went on. Glue the fringes around and by the second fringes, I like to crisscross in between and try to glue the next set of fringes in between the first layer. Here you could see I even just offset and layered together before adding it to the black tissue ball.
my back is definitely messy but trust the process all the white glue will disappear when it's fully dry next get some floral wire that's a little bit longer than the white extra scrap we cut out then glue the wire onto the scrap and glue that onto the back side of the petal where you didn't add the gradient paint this will help hold up the petals and you'll need to do this to all the petals which is a total of 10 petals I like to have a little extra floral wire sticking out on the bottom, which I will be connecting to the bottom of the tissue ball. Then glue just the bottom part of the petal and add that to the bottom and slightly up to the bottom of the fringes. We need five of the petals to go around the circle, so think of it like a star-like angle and have all five go around in the circle. The leftover wire on the bottom of the petal, I like to just tape it down. Then put the last set of the five flowers in between. Next, this is the bottom leaf shape and I make a straight cut to the center of the bottom and I cut a circle as big as my coupler in the center. Then glue this to the bottom of the flower and then I also have some single bottom leaves and add that to cover up any areas that need to be covered up. Then I cut four of these big side leaves that fit a whole 12 by 12 cardstock paper and they need to be paired up. Then add glue around the rim of the leaf with this white glue and I'll be linking that below the video. Make sure to leave an opening on the bottom of the leaves, then sandwich the pair on top and match up the edges. Then fold down the middle and it's okay if it doesn't perfectly meet down the middle and shape the pointy tips by curling it out and just adding some shape to these leaves. This part will be for the base of the giant paper flower so it could stand on its own and the stem. I like to use the Rapid Set Cement All and I haven't really experimented with other types of concrete. This one has a light gray finish and smooths on its own. Comes in a smaller box if you want to only make a couple or a bigger bag if you want to make a lot of stands. I'll be using plastic plant saucers that you can find in the plant section as our mold and I'm using an 8 inch size but there are bigger sizes if you want to add multiple flowers in one base. I use duct tape to guide my 3 4 coupler of my 3 4 inch PVC pipe. That will be my stem so that it will come apart to transport in a car. If you are using a different size PVC pipe, get the matching coupler. Add duct tape on only one end of the coupler. These will be found at Home Depot, Lowe's, or on Amazon and I'll try my best to link all of this below the video. Make sure you are being safe and wear gloves and a mask so you don't breathe breathe in the fine dust and safety goggles when working with this. I used about six scoops of these disposable plastic cups, but I like to work in small increments. If you do a lot at a time, it is harder to mix. You will also have to be quick so it doesn't set while you mix. Then add a little bit of water as you go and mix until you get a pancake consistency. Add more concrete if you need to thicken it. Fill up until you cover just the bottom and add your coupler. I have my coupler connected with a small PVC pipe just so I could hold it on the top. Then fill up a little more until right below the coupler ends. It should take a couple hours to fully set so while we wait for that we will now get the stems ready with PVC pipe. I got a pan, ladle, and funnel from a thrift store that I designated for this and not used for cooking. Then you can find playground sand outside or actually buy a bag of sand. I like to have enough to fill up the pan so I could work on multiple at a time but if you are only making one you could just use a little more than your PVC pipe could hold. Heat it up until you feel the sand is too hot to touch. Then tape one end of the PVC pipe with duct tape and the other side use a funnel and ladle to scoop your sand into the pipe. Then fill to the top and close it up with duct tape. And on the ground you could shape your desired shape. This will look a little different from each flower so shape accordingly. You could use heat gun or even a blow dryer but I felt the heated sand gave me the most even heat without kinking the pipe. Then take the sand back out. Once you have the stems shaped and ready, you could add thicker floral wire where you want your side leaves. I like it somewhere around the middle of the stem and tape down the leftover wire on the sides. Then to cover up the stem, I like to use this green crepe paper that I will be linking below the video and cut a strip about two to three inches in width. Then stretch the strip 
and add some white glue on the end and start wrapping the stem and add glue every so often so it doesn't unravel. When you get close to the added floral wire, just make sure to glue and carefully cover that area. Lastly, you could add your flower head on the top and loop the floral wire and add your side leaves. The loops should help the leaves stay in place in the direction you want it to go. Make sure to check out my other giant flower tutorials and please like this video below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.